Hi everybody! <laughs> I'm back again so soon, I know. Um, we're actually cooking turkey dinner today and I thought it would be really nice to try blueberry duff. That was the word I was trying to think of the other day when I was making my blueberry pie video. Um, so, I was at another yard sale. You know me and my beautiful yard sales. I bought this really, really, really old cookbook. Um, it was published in 1993 which is the year I think I graduated from <laughs> hairstyling school. Um, anyway, it's got the most beautiful blueberry recipes and in there was a recipe, it's called Favorite Blueberry Duff. And it was submitted by Frances M. Saunders from Carabineer. So thank you, Frances. I'm going to use your recipe and hopefully show everybody else how to make it. It calls for one egg. Normally when I'm breaking eggs, if it's not the first ingredient, I would put it in another bowl because that way if you get a shell or anything in there, it's easier to take out than if you had to, say, put it all in with your flour and everything and then try to fish that out. It's not much fun. So there's our egg. We need to stir into that three quarter cup of molasses. Crosby's molasses. <laughs> There's no other kind here. I've tried them and they are different. So Crosby's molasses, three quarters of a cup. I thought that was a lot for a dove, but we'll see. Uh, molasses tends to make things heavy and, and stuff, but it's super, super delicious and a great source of iron for sure. Um, so we're going to mix that along with three tablespoons of melted shortening. In the bowl goes that. And we're just going to mix that around. It says to beat it. It, it doesn't specify whether to use a mixer or a whisk or anything. So I'm just going to give it a mix, mix around here. Um, looking pretty good, smelling really good. And it says to also to this, add your vanilla. It calls for a teaspoon of vanilla. Thank God for Costco <laughs> and their giant vanilla for me. Um, I don't like really cheap vanilla. This uh, clubhouse is really, really nice without paying a fortune. By far, I think for me, Watson's vanilla, it's really good. So we're gonna add a teaspoon of vanilla in there. I actually think I'm gonna use my whisk for a few minutes. I think the whisk will lighten up the uh, molasses just a bit and add some um, airy lightness into the duck. Helps beat up the egg a little bit better too, I would imagine. So mixing and mixing and mixing. So it says to add the flour and spices. Um, it didn't say to mix them first. For me, I absolutely want to mix all my spices before because if not, they're not gonna be blended throughout properly. Um, and you might get like a piece with too much cinnamon or not enough this or that. So um, we've got, let's see, one and a half cups of flour. I'm just using regular all-purpose flour. A teaspoon of baking powder. Again, this is something else, magic baking powder. I've tried other baking powders and they leave like a weird taste in your mouth, which I don't like. So <laughs> I always go with the magic one. So we're looking for a teaspoon of this. This is my half teaspoon, so I'm just gonna put two of them in there. And a half teaspoon of baking soda. Uh, another trick I like to use is, so you know how when you have baking soda, it absorbs all the smells and stuff from your fridge? So I actually keep two boxes in there, one that is open and just left on the shelf. And then my other one from baking, I just take it and I put it in a little Ziploc bag and close it up and it keeps it fresh and it keeps all the smells out of there and it's, it's awesome because Sometimes, you know, when you're not sure how long baking soda has been in the fridge, it can absorb quite a bit of flavor from other foods, whether it be, I don't know, onions or anything really. Um, and this way, you know, you keep the smells out, which is great. Um, a 
teaspoon of cinnamon and allspice in there. And it also called for a half teaspoon of nutmeg. Um, watching cooking shows and stuff, I guess through the years, um, I, a tip was given to only, only ever use fresh nutmeg. I buy them at the bulk bar and they just look like little nuts. Um, and then I just use this that I use for zesting and stuff. And I kind of like just freshly like grate it. And the smell, like the fragrance, is unbelievable when you use fresh. So like I'll never, never, never go back to the powder stuff unless I can't get the fresh. But it's relatively cheap as well. So half teaspoon and nutmeg in there. And I think that's it for our spices. So I'm just going to give that a little whisk around just to, um, you know, blend it all together. Handy dandy whisk from Epicure. <laughs> yeah. I would have absolutely used some Epicure cinnamon if I had some, but I don't have any left. So now that I've got the, the dry ingredients kind of sifted together, um, I'm going to be ready now to, um, I guess, just alternatively fold in the dry ingredients. Um, there with a half a cup of cold water so I'm gonna put a little a little of the flour and then we're gonna put a little of the water and it just I guess helps um, I don't know incorporate it all together really well I think if you put just all the flour in there it might get a little dry and stiff for mixing especially with the molasses it smells so good. I wish you guys could smell it. I hope it turns out and I hope it tastes really well. This is actually my first time making blueberry duff. Uh, my nanny Lee used to make blueberry duff and my mom says that her blueberry duff was the best. I wish they had got her recipe. If anybody does have nanny's recipe, I would sure love it. So I got a little bit of flour and stuff and I'm going to put a little bit of water. And we're just going to um, alternately do that until it's all mixed in. It smells like Christmas. <laughs> I love Christmas cake, especially like the rum screech cake where you bake all the fruit in there and then you soak it in rum and wrap it in a cheesecloth and then you store it for like a month or more. Oh my favorite those cakes keep forever especially if you keep them in the freezer I believe my sister so that's what she had for her wedding cake and gosh I bet you she still has wedding cake in her freezer it smells actually it, it smells exactly like that Christmas dark fruit cake without the rum <laughs> maybe we'll have to make a little rum sauce for on top that would be nice And our last bit of flour and spices. And I guess there's no salt in here because there's no sugar either other than the molasses, but brown sugar comes from molasses, so I'm, I'm assuming it's gonna give it a nice bit of sweetness. You don't want to over mix too much because when you're working with baking powder and baking soda, you can actually deactivate it by, you know, mixing too much. Just make sure it's nice and smooth. And then it says to fold in the blueberries. It called for a one cup of blueberries. And I'm just going to, I think I had a little bit, <laughs> just over a cup of blueberries. I like extra blueberries and everything. And it says to place in a pudding bag and put it in the pot with your dinner. So um, my, um, I guess, peas pudding bag has peas pudding in it and it's in the pot already with the salt meat. Um, so what I did, I don't know, a couple of years ago, I guess we were doing something similar, ran out of a bag. So I whipped this one up out of an old pillowcase or something and you can do the same for sure. 
so yeah, I'm just going to, I think for ease, I'm just going to, actually, I'm going to lay it right back down in my measuring cup. I think it'll make it way easier for tying up and filling up. And how are we going to do this now without making a big mess, I wonder? Let's see. Scrape this all. Maybe when I get so much of it in there, I can just tip up my bowl and pour it. Just going to, um, yep. Yeah. There you know what? I think I'm. <laughs> that's too tedious for me. I'm going to pick up my uh, bowl and pour that right in there, and hopefully I won't make a giant, giant mess. Let's try it with a little measuring cup. That might work a little better. Sorry for all the banging of the dishes. It's really hot in the kitchen with the turkey and the stove boiling and everything else. There we go. Let's try. Wish me luck. <laughs> Going. Just gonna lay that down. Push it down to the bottom. It might actually stand for me now. Nobody's perfect. Might be almost. <laughs> My goodness, there must be an easier way to do this. I'm thinking that um, my canning... Um, Funnel, I guess you would call it, I think might work well. But I'm not about to walk across the kitchen and get that. I'm almost done. It looks really nice and dark. I don't know if you guys can see that. A little runny, but similar to uh, similar to cake mix. Smells so, 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 so good. Side. Got a fine mess made, that's for sure. So, you want to um, put it in your bag, but you want to leave enough room for this to kind of cook and expand a bit. Same as you would peas pudding or something. I'm going to pick a piece of twine, any old twine will do. And we're just going to um, wrap that around the top. We're going to tie a couple of knots in there. And then it'll be ready for the pot. It's going to take about an hour and a half to cook, um, which is why I'm putting it in now, even though my turkey and stuff isn't done and my I don't have any veg in the pot yet. Um, yeah, so here's the bag of pudding. I'll take a picture and stuff and put the recipe on for you. Um, I like to leave a bit of a string. What we like to do is when we put the bag in the pot, we're going to take the string and just kind of tie it around the handle of the pot and then that way your pudding bag is not going to fall right down and stick to the bottom because sometimes when that happens and you're not careful and you're busy doing things you can actually stick the bottom um, the pot onto the bottom of your bag and then your pudding might burn or your duff and that's not going to be very nice either and um, yeah I'm thinking I may do a sauce not necessary. Most people just put this on the side of their plate with the jigs dinner and way to go. Uh, I think my hubby wants a little sauce. Like he's not saucy enough. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll do that and uh, I'll come back with a picture and stuff and hopefully it'll turn out. If it doesn't, I'll put a picture of that on too. I hope you're having a beautiful day and thanks for watching and thanks so much for sharing and uh, yeah, we'll see you again. Bye! Thank you.